as chair of the Advisory Council, I would like to wish you a very cordial welcome to Cliverden House to our third ECFA annual meeting. And I would also like to thank everybody and particularly uh, our director, ECFA director, plus his whole staff, because they have been working enormously to organize this fantastic setting that we are all enjoying today. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for your very kind introduction. As director, I am happy to report to all our followers around the world that ECFA, or ECFA as we call it, has thrived in the last year. And it has thrived very encouragingly, for which we have to thank all our friends, colleagues and partners who have made invaluable contributions to making our organization a great success. As a former Commissioner for External Relations and also Foreign Minister of my country, Austria, I've got to know all these countries of Central Asia for a long time. And then I have visited them very often, always to try to bring the region together with Europe. I must say it's also quite an interesting co coincidence that this, this meeting takes place very shortly after the important and difficult referendum, Brexit. Indeed, and today, members of the Advisory Council and their guests, among whom are many members of Parliament and former servants of Her Majesty's Government, will have an ample opportunity to discuss and debate very thoroughly the Central Asia's relationship with Europe and the United Kingdom. And I'm sure that this partnership will continue to thrive in future. When I was preparing for this report, I thought maybe I'll mention some of you by name and title, and then I figured that I'll just eat up half of our time by just mentioning you and all your titles. So it's just <laughs> so many distinguished people in the same room. Uh, as you know, uh, first of all, welcome to, to this third annual meeting of the ECFA. As you know, last year we had our meeting at the Imperial Hotel in Vienna. It was a great success and I, I'm sure that our today's meeting will be a great success as well. I sort of hate this word populism because so often it is when people don't actually want to identify what people are angry about or they just want to call people ignorant and actually I think it's much better to try and examine why people uh, voted as they did. See, looking from outside, and this is also namely the main reason why the majority of Norwegians have voted no twice in 72 and in 94. We had a referendum. People voted no. Uh, the discussion so far has very usefully uh, emphasized the importance of sovereignty question in the context of Brexit and in the context of European Union. In Britain, um, I mean, that, that is acknowledged and understood, and it's by the way why I ch changed my mind in the 1980s, because I argued for a, us not to join the EU back in 1975. We do need a contact group, international contact group with people representing government that are strongly, strongly committed to go ahead. I, I enjoyed very much the statement that it's wrong to have old assumptions in a rapidly changing world. I, I had a speech last, last week in Greece and I said that we had to get rid of old, of old cliches, old presumptions, old prejudices. This is the, the mm. same feeling. We have to get rid of them as, as fast, as soon as possible. Mm. Uh, on, all, uh, uh, on the plate of everyone, uh, and we all uh, discuss these issues and uh, we try to understand uh, uh, what uh, they carry for all of us, uh, for our futures, for our immediate futures.
I would like to thank all the online visitors, all of our colleagues who work with us, the academics, the professors, the students, all our colleagues that are here today, because we think it is so important to work together and we are hopeful and thankful that we will have a good conclusion of this third year of the ECFA. And of course, moreover, I would also like to thank His Royal Highness Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, who has been with us tonight and has honored us with his presence. But I also would like to thank the family Astor, who has given us the hospitality and the chance to enjoy this wonderful evening and the wonderful day tomorrow to be with us. Thank you very much. And to all our friends in Central Asia, the United Kingdom and Europe, we wish the most prosperous end of the year and many more new exciting opportunities and developments in the year 2017.